Six o'clock, we'll uh, start the meeting. Any comments from, from the public that's here? But I wish to make any comments or others that are not on the scheduled appointments. No? Okay. We'll move on to our scheduled appointments. The first one is 615, I assume. So we, yeah, seeing as a public here. hearing, we should probably we should wait, wait, wait yeah. till 615. Okay, so you want to do it at 630? The 630 folks are here. Peggy is that Sloan, might be nice to let them get out early. Get out earlier. They are here. Okay, Peggy Sloan. Yeah. Uh, guys, you, uh, and Jessica Atwood, Atwood from Frontier Regional Council of Governments. It's going to talk about their technical assistance grant that they have with the town. Yes. Welcome back. <laughs> so I thought I'd start. Um, and uh, Jessica is going to present another scope of work that hopefully reflects what the town of Waitley wanted. I just would like to say that I'm hopeful that we can decide on a scope tonight because we need to start working because the grant funding expires on December 30th. Um, so Jessica's going to talk about um, a broader economic development project based on the feedback you got last time. Um, we have another option. Um, I'm not sure that we'll be able to complete this scope of work by the end of the year, uh, but it's actually larger than the available budget. So one of the ideas we had was to get as far as we could until December 31st, and then the charrette that's proposed could happen in the spring. So we'd have adequate time to do advertising. If we start and we try and do a charrette by Thanksgiving, we'd be really hard pressed to get proper notice. And, and between Thanksgiving and the new year, it's kind of difficult to get people to come out. So, Jessica. Okay. <laughs> Here is a revised proposed scope. Can I ask a real quick question? Sure. Was DOTA 19 funded? Next year? Yes. We are expecting DLTA funding for next year. So you could come in and request an additional amount so we could finish off the project. And we typically prioritize the projects that we've started yeah. in the previous year to make sure they get done. Okay. So as you may recall, when I was here in August, we had talked about um, a kind of a Wheatley Center focused project. And then after further discussion, uh, it was proposed to look at something more town-wide and have an event related to um, developing a vision for economic development in Wheatley. Um, so what I've, what I've got before you is basically an outline of an event and what the topics would be. So it would be a public event. It would have a small group portion of it that would be facilitated group discussion. Uh, topics to be discussed would be what are the community's top goals for pursuing economic development? Is it, is it creating more tax revenue? Is it creating more jobs? What are, what are the, the primary priorities for economic development in the community? Uh, then looking at sub-areas of Waitley, um, what are the important community assets in those areas and can they or should they be leveraged to support economic development? And I recall you talking about a planning board survey that had talked about assets in the community, so I, th I thought we would use that to feed into developing the materials for that component. Then also with these sub-areas, looking at um, what type of economic development should be encouraged in these areas? What would that look like in five or, or 20 years? And then for particular sites in the community that are in these sub-areas, asking what are people's vision for those sites? An example being like the Whaley um, Center School. What are people's thoughts on those types of sites? Um, to accomplish this, we would create a lot of materials. We would have a promotional flyer, we'd have um, kind of a, if you have a community newsletter, we can type up a, a draft article that can be used. Um, a lot of the work for promoting it will really be on the town. Um, you know, having FERCA invite people doesn't mean as much as having town officials invite people to come. There would be an introductory PowerPoint at the event to kind of provide some overview of the regional economy and, and what we're hoping to achieve at the event. There would be maps created that people could work with in the small group discussion. And, and we would just try to collect as much information and input as we could in the small group discussion. 
All that information would then be put into a report that's presented to the Board of Selectmen. Okay, so what, what is your, your, your schedule here? Is it to accomplish like a timeline? Yeah. Well, I guess it kind of depends on how we cross over DLTA years. So I think, you know, what we can get started from, from, with is working with the select board and probably the planning board members to map out the sub areas, identify the list of questions, prepare the flyer, do the PowerPoint materials. So all the things that would go into the charrette. And then in January, after the holidays, begin advertising it. If you have some kind of an event um, scheduled in the spring, you know, we can time it for that. We have that flexibility because, or if you wanted to have it, announce it at, when's your annual town meeting? Yeah. End, of April. End of April. I don't know if you want to wait that long, but if you did, we could announce it at annual town meeting or we could have it, you know, be announced beforehand so that people could have input. Um, the other option that I'd just like to bring back was, you know, the, the previous scope of work, which is really focused on Waitley Center since, you know, you've, you've gone out to bid for the, the town hall. And I think, you know, the, the proposal was to do a survey and really get a handle on what folks wanted to see in terms of economic development in the historic town center, um, which could help inform any zoning changes that are needed, because you're probably aware there's very limited uses right now allowed in the historic town center, and particularly looking at the reuse of the center school. So that, even if you did that, I realize it's not town-wide, but it would be a building block that might get the planning board going if you feel like that's more time critical to get some of those answers. We could complete that survey by the end of the year and give some information, and then you could apply next year to do the broader vision and, and the charrette. So, so would that survey be similar to what you handed out the last meeting? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the, the more I've been thinking about about the, the revised proposal that we presented at the last meeting with you, I think our, our biggest uh, benefit from this is, is, is input on the center school. That's our, our one of our, our major uh, properties that we're going to have to decide what to do mm -hmm. in the next year or two. Uh, we keep hearing different stories, tear down, make an office there, a restaurant, whatever you want. Uh, and it would be good to have a meeting where more of the community could get together and talk about it, not just the center of town, but the, the entire town to do that. Uh, yeah, so I, I like that part. If you're going to do that uh, this fall, I think that would be worthwhile. So we were proposing a survey. We could we could have, we could also host a, a, a meeting. I don't that actually see a survey on. This here. is. Uh, do you have the previous scope of work, Jessica? Yeah. This is the one. I, I remember seeing that last time. Right. But but on here, it's not. That, yeah, that's, this, this is a different local. scope of work. This different scope. So last time we talked about a survey right. for the town center, probably holding a right. public meeting to present the survey results and getting some feedback. Yeah. And, and that we can, our, our we, feedback on that was that we can do this. We don't need technical assistance to do this in a way. But what we really needed was was something something more than this. Uh, and we needed discussion and, and because, because leadership in the group. I, I was like, in, in here. Yeah. Gathering individuals' responses that they think about maybe in their home on these is not as informative as having a lot of people discuss ideas and, and mm -hmm. understand what people think about each other's ideas yeah. or things that they might not have thought of. It's, it's, like, it's like a completely different dynamic of, of you know, how you're getting ideas. So, so I, not, I feel like, like yeah, having a bunch of individuals post responses to some pretty uh, vague questions. Well, we can uh, fine tune the survey right. to be more well, specific, and we can hold a meeting. But even more specific questions, and I don't, I don't know what to make those questions to make them useful. But it might would be useful if starting out with these kinds of questions, but in a room where people are, mm -hmm. where the, the talks being facilitated. 
Okay. Okay. Because you know we we we've, we've done all kinds of stuff with the town hall with surveys and so on, and um, that didn't help us. But really helped us was getting a hundred people in the cafeteria at Whitley Elementary talking to each other around the table and hearing each other's ideas and understanding more about what their neighbors are thinking. Mm -hmm. And it, and I, I don't think. I mean, I know, I know this is really easy for you to do, and it would be really easy for us to do as well, um, but I don't think this is gonna get us anything that's useful. It would be an exercise in you doing some stuff, collating, putting this together. I mean, this is my own opinion. I mean, maybe Fred feels differently well, about it. I, it depends but, on what so, we uh, agree you know, to. So, you know, I just yeah. play a little devil's advocate here. I, I hear what you're saying about the survey, and it is really useful to have, you know, a public, meeting on it and to get actual input and discussion going. But also the survey is good for people that can't necessarily attend the meeting. And so having doing doing both I think is valuable. And if you if you have the survey out and you have the results, then you're gonna have a basis for the discussion. Like this is what we heard, now we'd like to hear the feedback from from folks rather than just trying to organize everybody and hope you get 100, but if you don't, and you only get 20 people that can show up between now and Thanksgiving, you won't no, get No, no, I'm talking about, about I, I thought your scope of work, I like this one much better. That one much better. And I don't feel like this one is useful at all. I, I think we, so need I to, we may need to revise the questions to get more. Out. Well, so your think. idea is just to have like a charrette just focused on the town center, is that what I'm hearing? No, it, this, it, point? this is actually broad. You know, what are, what are the community's top goals? Until that, but spring. that won't be until next spring. Next spring. I thought you were saying you could do part of this now and then do we part We can do later. all the upfront work, but actually having the charrette would be in the spring. Okay, and that's Feel? all part of this proposal about yes. this one. Okay, which doesn't have a survey in it. It does Correct. not. Okay, so so it's this, uh, it's all of this upfront work, this uh, you know identifying things, putting things in the town newsletter, which is mailed to every person's house right. every three months. Um, that will get people's attention. Yeah. Um, and and get you know, in a way, get these questions out and say, hey, this is the time to come for that discussion. Okay. That I, mean, I, I guess as long as you're as, as long as you're comfortable waiting yeah, I, until the spring to yeah. have that charrette. What I yeah what I what I told you is things that I really think I can't really speak for for Fred but um, it just seems like for example if the center school building is redeveloped would you like to have the building become well there's like five examples and don't know and other well. There's a lot, like with this commercial office, it's very different from a restaurant, and it's very different from, like, oh, they're all a bunch of different examples. It's not like we actually have uh, someone who wants to go in for commercial offices and someone who wants a restaurant. We're not really choosing among these, right? No, but so I when it goes out as a survey, that's, that's what you're going to get yeah. back. Well, I'd rather have, this is what I'd rather, but we don't really have, realistically have, a choice among these things. Well, I think it's important that's, when you're looking for a developer, if the town has said these are the types of uses we're comfortable with, and you can present that in your request for proposals, and say, we've done a town-wide survey, these are the types of things, we've changed the zoning so this is possible. That's a lot easier to issue an RFP and attract a developer than we're not really sure. So yes, is it a, a wish list at this point? Perhaps, but you won't really know until you get the feedback to identify what those uses are that folks would like to see in the historic center and then craft your RFP. One of the major things developers are looking for when they come into town is, is their acceptance of a certain idea. They're looking for that assurance that if they, you know, put a proposal in and they spend the, the time and energy to, to work with the town, that they're not gonna get into a special permit process and then find out that there's not town support. So establishing that support, I think, is worthwhile. Um, I, I think we need to work some more on the questions here, and, and if you got some thoughts of revising this, please send it to Brian, and we can we can look at it again and get back with you. Uh, but the, the the other thing that that comes to mind, you're doing a change of subject a little bit, kind of related to this. You're doing a survey for Conway, right? Yes on what's it, it's not economic development, what do you call it? It is, it's an economic development survey. Okay. In the right. For the town center. For the town center, okay, is that online already? I yes. See. Okay, so is, is that 
similar to, to these questions here? Uh, no. Um, it's more, uh, it, it's also trying to find out where people shop. Um, what types of businesses and shops would they, or whatever, commercial space, what have you, they would like in the community. Whereas the survey that we were talking about in the previous proposal from the August select board meeting was specific to Waitley Center. Right. Could you send us a, a, a send Brian, yeah. a copy of that without, without looking at the... Can I, can I find oh, it? Online, do you think? Yeah, it's a survey monkey survey. I don't. Yeah, we're all looking at survey monkey right now. It won't come up on the Google search. I don't know if you can copy survey monkey the the questionnaire. But we can send you a copy of the survey. Send us a copy of that. Yeah, I like to see that. that So what I what I think what they're asking us today is or at this meeting is, and Peggy, correct me if I'm wrong. Either we do the revised scope with the charrette. Option A would be to. Do a, all option A is do the upfront work, hold the charrette in the spring, or do something more limited with focused on the center school and do all of this next year. So I think they're trying to get some, yeah, some we guidance need some, from we us. Yeah, we need some direction. Because their money's going to go away in December. So, sort of. If you put anything up until next year, does it start January 1st or does it start September of the following January year? January 1st, I believe. January 1st. January 1st. Yeah. So it's the whole 12 month period. So. I think that's, I think but we I, a little bit of guidance as to how we want to, what we want to do for our, sorry, almost October, October, November, December, for the next yeah. three months, what do we want them to do? So I guess what I was proposing is, you know, a survey now that we can complete by the end of the year with results and public meeting, or if you want the other option, which Jessica presented tonight, we could get all the upfront work done and then hold the charrette in next year that would be a broader visioning process, which. And would there be enough money to do this whole thing next year? Um, well, what we would do is we'd spend the money down this year to start the process, and then we would need another two or three thousand dollars next year that you would apply okay. for. No, okay, no, I, I, I must have heard you wrong. I thought you said the choice is either do the survey this year or do the upfront work on this this year. Right. Those are the two possibilities for this year, and for next year, depending on what you cho choose, it's either the rest of this or the whole of this. So my question was, is the whole of this? Is there enough money next year to do the whole of this? In I don't case? know if there's enough money to do the whole of this. So that's not really the uh, an option. If we want to do the whole of this, we have to do. I think you need to step, start it now. This year and yeah, start it now. Finish it next year. And yep. finish it next year. Yeah. So it's not like you can you can have both. Can't we really have that, both? I can't things. promise both because we get a yeah. lot of requests for yeah. DLTA funding and it's pretty limited. So we typically limit the size of the projects to like five or six thousand dollars. Waitley got five thousand this year. We have about. 4,500 roughly mm -hmm. left in the budget because um, okay. Jessica has been working with you on the scope. So I would want to either start the bigger visioning mm -hmm. process this year or mm -hmm. do or just do a little thing and do nothing next year. So you're saying you can't do both. Yeah, this year. Right. I, 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 can't I can't promise. I can't promise. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I can't promise that you can do all of this if you start it next year because there might not be enough money to do all of this in one right. year. As well, so, the, the, the funds available now have to end on December 31st right. for that. So whatever you do, it's, it's got to be done now to use the money. Yeah, and, you've got to do something with it. Right, and yeah. if you have money left, can you do the survey then? I, I guess I'm asking. Well, when you apply next year, you should say we want to finish it out with the charrette, and we'd also like to do the survey if that's what you decide. The only, the only thing, uh, but I, I, I don't know if we, we're going to, how successful would be in getting uh, the town together for two different charrettes or surveys. Well, I think there's only whatever. one charrette on the table. I know, but so, if you yeah. pull up, put the other one off until later on, I'm not sure the survey? you're going to get anything. Yeah, the yeah. survey later on, I think you... Well, yeah, my, yeah, my, I guess I'm, I'm okay with not doing the survey, the survey myself. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I can't speak for John. Um, well, so some, sometime or other, we're going to have to decide on, on the Whaley Center School. And 
My thought are we're going to need be some a, kind of be a big thing. Yeah. some kind of meeting that can be, or that, that can be part survey. of the that can be yeah. part of the shred. That can be part of the. You just won't have the survey that will go out. So it's really the folks that come to the shred. Okay. Or if yeah. if we can, you know, pretend. Well, we can do a survey. survey. <laughs> we make a survey all the time. Yeah. And that's that's something that's that I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't need to make it sound like technical assistance isn't appreciated, but. And that's yeah, fine. Yeah. You, you might be working on a survey in conjunction as we're preparing for the shred. Right, right, that, could, right, yeah. that could be presented at, at the shred as a, as a basis for informing. At least a place to start a conversation. Yeah. yeah. And then we would have breakout groups. So, you know, it's labor intensive. We need to have a number of staff there to help facilitate and guide that process. Okay, if you're going to do that, yeah, okay, I guess I can go along with that. If you're going to do a survey and I think, yeah. focus some on the center school and the Yeah, survey. so the town is doing the survey for the okay. broader visioning process, and we're yeah. you know, prepping all the materials for the charrette to and then helping you with the yeah, charrette next spring. Yeah. Okay. Does that sound like a plan? Fine with me. You okay with that? Yeah. So, okay. so just to be clear, kind of doing your first thing you said was take this new proposal, which I think sounds a lot like what we talked about last time. So I think this is a, a pretty good encapsulation of that. Do the head work on it, and then use funds from next year to actually do the the charrette. The charrette. Yeah. Okay. Which is a new word. I just learned at the last meeting. For those who don't know what a charrette is, <laughs> it's a facilitated meeting, kind of like the one we had at the elementary school. Uh, about future of the town hall a couple years back. Great. Thank you. So we can start work. Okay. And we'll be reaching out to the planning board as well to get information from the survey that they did and, and to get their feedback on this as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Uh, go back to our 615. Yeah, I think Verizon. we should. Yeah. Verizon Eversource poll hearing on Agent Drug. It's Verizon. Yeah, Come here. on, sit up front. Why sit up front? We don't buy. Yeah. Or Eversource. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the record, who are you? My name is Paul Davis, and I work for a company by the name of UC Synergetic out here in Sunderland. And we are a contract engineering company doing work for Verizon. And I'm here tonight representing Verizon on their behalf. And what's the name of the company again? UC Synergetic. Okay. So, would you like me to read the formality part of it, or would you just like me to get into the layman's terms? Yes, please, because we'd like everybody to yeah. hear the formal part of it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, petition for joint or identical poll location, Verizon New England Inc. in Eversource Energy, doing business as Western Mass Electric Company, request permission to locate poles, wires, cables, and fixtures, including the necessary anchors, guys, and other such sustaining and protecting fixtures to be owned and used in common by your petitioners along and across the following public way or ways. Egypt Road, place one jointly owned pole number T16E18 on the southern side of e Egypt Road at a point approximately 260 feet easterly from the center line of the Boston and Maine railroad tracks. Egypt Road, place one jointly owned pole number T15E17 on the northerly side of Egypt Road at a point approximately 385 feet easterly from the center line of the Boston and Maine railroad tracks. Egypt Road, place one jointly owned pole number T14E16 on the southerly side of Egypt Road at a point approximately 535 feet Easterly from the center line of the Boston and Maine railroad tracks. When you say easterly, you're following the road or is it a direct line? Following the like because the road zigs and zags a little bit. Oh, well, here's your direction north. Yeah, that's why I'm asking is it is it directly east or is it like you say easterly? Easterly. Um, the road yeah. kind of zigzags going towards right. the east. Does it go along? Am I measuring it along the road or is yes. it measuring it direct due east? Along the road. Along the road. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. And lastly, place one, e Egypt Road, place one jointly owned pole number T13E15 on the northerly side of Egypt Road at a point approximately 685 feet easterly from the center line of the Boston and Maine Railroad tracks. Reason, place four jointly owned poles on Egypt Road to provide for the distribution of intelligence and telecommunications and for the transmission of high and low voltage electric current. Wherefore said petitioners pray and after due notice and hearing as provided by law, they be granted locations for and permission to erect and maintain poles, wires, and cables together with anchors, guides, and other such sustaining and protecting fixtures as they may find necessary said poles to be erected substantially in accordance with the plan filed herewith marked Verizon number 182G48R dated August 21st, 2017. Okay. What is the reason for placing these poles? Okay, so in layman's terms, What's going on out here on Egypt Road, uh, a gentleman in town or somewhat local is building some lots um, or trying to build on some lots out on Egypt Road. The poles being proposed tonight would be a pole line extension for those buildable lots on Egypt Road, mm -hmm. pretty simply. Why are you you're going you're going back and forth to be in front of the property each parcel? Yes, um, based on trees having to be trimmed and the contours of the street and also where the houses will go in the end, uh, the poles are placed in locations that would easily provide service to those buildable lots. Okay, so the, there's nothing to the. Uh, west of the railroad tracks. You don't cross the railroad tracks through the lines or under or anything? No. Okay. Is there anybody from Egypt Road here? Mm -hmm. How do we feel? Don't agree. Sorry? Don't agree with one of the poles. I, I was guessing you were going to say that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's actually on our property and it's a spot that we tend to use. <coughs> Um, so if they could take from our side and then cross over, because that's where the service is going to end up That's the being. site it's going to be on anyway, so you know, the, they're going to be using it on that side. Why are they putting it right, like in the middle of our yard, you know? It's, you come up here and show us where you're trying to show us. Yeah, I know where the sticks are. You know, which, which poll number so that they... Yeah. So, this is going at a railroad pole. Here's a railroad. Railroad tracks, okay. So where's the existing room? It's the last it's, existing one of ours. The, they're going to be putting a pole right here, right? Yeah, this new one. That's T15E17. That's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. Where did they put it? Okay. Should have been on the other side. I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost. Can I just give for the king? Here's for the record. Who are you? Richard okay. and Tammy Sear. Sear? Yep. Okay, thank you. And who was? He said, who are we? Oh. So the one that's second, second closest to the tracks. This one. And what are you saying that is in not the best location? Or what, what's, your, what's your issues sort of that? It's on our land, and it's in a well, spot they, that we tend to use. Well, it's on town property. No, actually where the sticks are right now is on our land. No, I, they might have property that goes over there. The way well, all these poles will be on town property. Yeah. 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 The, the but, town control is six. Eight. Was it eight? Eight. How many is the town control? Road? Egypt Road is 40 feet wide. <clears throat> but uh, what's the town's layout beyond the actual? Uh, it would depend. On, the road can be anywhere within the 40 feet. I'd have to look at the bounds. So you've got about 10 feet on each side of the And you, and so you live. We're the last actual pole right now. So the next pole is going to be further down on our land. What we would like, because it's actually going to be for usage across the street, why don't you come from our pole, go across the street, and then go down? That's our, that's our um, request. 
Well, it, it, looks, it looks like there's pools on the other side of the street for the other two properties. So I, I don't understand why you're saying they're going to go across. Because if you look where the sticks physically are on the road right now, our house is here, the pole, our, our pole's here, then it goes down here to our end of our property, then away across the street. The land that's for sale is right across the street. So why don't you go from that pole across the street and stay on that side? Because the rest of the land is our land on our side. We're not using yeah, it. I was, can you tell me which parcels we're talking about? Do you have it in which parcels? Could you come up here, please, and show yeah. us uh, on the map? Parcel 27 is for sale. Where is your house in relation to parcel 27? I don't know where these parcels are, so. The, do you have the same map that we do? I think so. Yeah, but where's the street numbers? We're 27. There are no street numbers. They just they just listed as parcels. Parcels in the zone. Yeah. I think. I think it's 13. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, I think it's pole T13. That's the that problem. That's the one they're talking about. So the, the first yeah. one after is an existing pole. Right, that's the, the last one on the street. Down, uh, so it should be on parcel 13. I don't know. That don't look right, does it? No. We're 33. You're 33. They're 27. And they're 27. Who's 27? But 27 is not a plot that's got. Mm -hmm. no. On here, there's, there's no, no house on that. There's right? no so that's what I'm confused about. When you say it's your land that you're using, it's not the land that your house is on. Yes, it is. It is. This map does not look like yeah. what no. our no. street. No, the there's an earlier version we show with, with that. See, that's the wall up in here. They're questioning on the other side of the street. I don't know what right. the hell that is. Now, the new version, you changed it. Is that supposed to be a yeah. pole? Yeah, they've got it on TMEs. Right? Yeah, they've got well, it on the Why don't they do it? Wait a minute. So, now I'm getting confused. The new version, the old version. Now, what's this new version, old version that you're talking about? We received a revised map. Right. Dated September. We received it yesterday afternoon. Okay. This is dated September 26. So okay. So I, I'm with you. I understand what you're saying. So my question is, do you have the old version? Is that my question? We have nothing. We just got the. Couple we just know where the old. sticks are in our. Yeah. Physically on our street, we know where the sticks. Are. Right, but what I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to understand where the stick is. So I currently have the updated version. I'm just trying to figure out which pole that we're talking about. My guess would be based on the new version that it's pole T13E15, correct? Right. Right. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, you're looking at the last, that's the yeah. last thing you're right. looking for. Yeah. And then your driveway, she's here. Okay. And then yeah. that's the yeah. one that's yeah. out yeah. in the front of the yard. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. 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 They own the streets. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They want to know why not. They want to know why not. They want to know why not. I gotcha. So, what they're saying. Why does it have to create a little air in the middle of the night? Just reverse that. Yeah, before it was over here. Mr. Theron. Excuse me a minute. Okay. Uh, I'm Walter Thayer. I own the land in question on the south side of the, and I have a Mylar copy if anybody's interested in, that really shows everything. Is it, is it going to show the same as their resources proposal? I, I, mean, I have not seen that. Yeah. Would you like to take a look at it? Yeah. And let's see, we can sit down okay. together and figure this out. All right. This probably is more. pole that's out there right now. The existing pole that, that stands as we speak. That would be right down here. Right there. On his side. 
See that indicated there? In which way, in regards to the petition, are we going so on that? So that's what this one is. Westerly. So here, if my mind, if my mind is still intact today, and I remember correctly, right. your point is going on that side. Is going back on that side? Here on this side of the road. Correct? Yep. All right. So again, I believe the poll that's in question, or, or the state, or the location that's in question right now with these people across the aisle mm -hmm. is poll T13E50, which is somewhere over in this area here, mm -hmm. okay? So their, their question currently is, why is this location here? Why is it not across the street? Well, I think when I, I met with people from uh, both companies that they wanted to reduce the amount of cutting of trees along the way. Okay. So, so they, excuse me, they, they, they outlined uh, and put in the uh, white markers out there mm -hmm. to show where they would like to do it without cutting a lot of trees and, and uh, really taking away from the existing house's property. It might be a little tree trimming to string the wires, but it wouldn't be any, any large trees. Yeah, this is where they are. Over there. So maybe it's the old folks in front of them originally. So maybe that mark is. Yeah. Yeah, we've just got the assessors. There are about five, yeah, five conversations going okay. on here. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is this very resolved or are. So, okay, to, okay. So to summarize our very brief conversation, the reasoning for the current location of the poll in question is because of tree trimming. Eversource would like to cut down on the tree trimming if at all possible. That's the reason why it's located where it is. If the poll has to go across the street based on objection from tonight's meeting, then there will be, there will have to be some, some I would hate to use the word severe, but some pretty heavy duty tree trimming out here on Egypt Road. Are you doing any tree trimming for the other polls? Yes, I, Verizon will not be, no. And I don't speak for Eversource because I don't represent them. However, in the meeting that we had in the field, they said yes, there would be some tree trimming involved. For the other three? Correct. But not for this one in quite where I'm fishing. Correct. But if, so if you move to the other side, are you, you're going to be there to trim the trees anyway. What is the issue of not trimming it for that pool? Well, that's something that somebody has to bring up with Eversource because, again, I don't represent Eversource. Who do you represent again? I'm sorry. Verizon. Oh, okay. I apologize. Yeah. And Mr. Thayer, is that what you... Yeah, yeah. <coughs> well, his, his Verizon owns the utility poles, the way I understand it. Okay. And so it's just an extension of, of that from the last, obviously from the last pole. And that's what we're after. Okay, so what does your map show? Well, it so doesn't show the. It doesn't show. It, no, okay. it doesn't show what we want to do. It just shows what's existing. Oh, okay. Yeah. And can I ask your? Just so I'm clear, and I apologize, this, this map doesn't show lot numbers. Your house, again, the map that I'm looking at. Your house is on the straight, or your house is on the curb. Um, Ballpark. You're on the street. We're on yeah. the street. So you'll be on the curb going west. On the right on the right on the north side of the street. Mm -hmm. So I guess I am confused because I don't see based upon what I'm looking at, the number the, twenty seven, John. I, 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 I got that. Okay. So could you maybe could you come up here please and show us on this Because side by your this house, where your house is looking. It doesn't look like there's a pole yeah. land for their front yard or their it's further to this is number 27 
right here. No, no, it's that. This is 37. This is 27. Oh, I think they're going to turn it This pool. Yeah. 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 Listen, I've been out of the corner. I still buy the wooded land. They're across the street from this one. They're across the street from there. They want to pick it up right here. Right. And then they're going to have it. Right. That's what that is. That's, yeah. Right. So obviously, what we have here is incorrect. If, if they're saying that this is not the same thing, you know, 27, that doesn't matter. No, 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 no. The 27 and the 33 does. So your house would be the dust. So your house is the dust. I don't see that. This is incorrect. Right, that's what I'm saying. Number 27. Number 27. Yeah. I thought your house was more in this area, no. but it sounds like it's this in this area. Right so this is our and then this is where this, this one is. So, so just to show you the French goat here, yeah. or somewhere right. in this neighborhood. Yeah. Right. 7 3. Because um, oh, this is. is it's a Okay, so that is correct. That is correct. That is 27. There isn't the correct owners. I got you. Yeah, it says uh, Richard and Tammy Sear is the owner. Tammy, can you show me just one last thing? I'm getting confused about This is the assessor's map for your plot. Is that? Yes. Is there a poll? How do you get service there now? So, but this map, none of the maps you've shown me, none of the maps that you've shown me show a poll on, but that's on parcel 33. That's on number 33, parcel 73. I think the parcels are misnumbered. It looks more pictured. I don't think so. The parcels are not. Because the parcels aren't, because that matches the assessor's map. Oh, really? Yeah. I think the maps doesn't show where the numbers are. Hey, Brian. Yeah. Speaking for myself, I honestly think that we have to have this uh, continue, continue yeah. because yeah. this is a disaster right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the locations of the existing pole match what the folks who live there are telling us. Mm -hmm. And on this, there, map. there's no way we can. Thank make you. a decision with their best intentions in, in mind and their best intentions in mind, right. unless we have maps that we can we can follow. Yeah, the maps. The Otherwise, we're making a sense. decision, throwing a dart. Right. And if yeah. the numbers need to be changed at parcel or house number, if, if they do or no, but there's got to be clarity, and we we yeah. need yeah. we need a more granular map. Uh, and maybe that, maybe what Walt has is, is it should be an overlay of this or something because. You want to see? No, 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 no. I'm just, what I'm suggesting is yeah. that map as an overlay on this. Or a film or a satellite type. Or whatever it is. Yeah, but right this here. is. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, uh, the assessor's more. maps are available. And that's, that should make it clear where parcel 27 is. 7-3 in yeah. parcel numbers. But the house number 27 is on that lot that's adjacent to the B&M Railroad land. Uh, it's that sort of, I don't know, Louisiana-shaped parcel, right? And if there's really a pole there, that's not showing on either of the various maps that we've got. So it says the existing pole's up here, but our resident who lives there is saying the pole is actually existing poles over here, which means this plan doesn't make any sense. If there's already poles all the way down to here, then why not just go across the street to there and there? And then, so I think your existing pole isn't in the right place on this map. And I think John's right. We can't make a decision with uh, conflicting information. So yes, continuing to, is the right thing to do. You need to correct it and show, show where the poles are. And I guess find out from every source if, like I was saying earlier, if you're, if you're trimming trees for three poles, if they're going to trim trees for four poles, how much more is that? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you're trimming a, a half acre to get a pole in, or are you just trimming one tree? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, Keith, did you? Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment. I, I did take a look at it beforehand, and from obviously, I can understand the Sears concern. However, by the way it was laid out, it was clearly, and I've been involved in many of these poll hearings on 
on the roads where they're continuing. By zigzagging, it will dramast dramatically reduce the clear cut. By running the power lines all on one side, you will basically be clear cutting trees that were where you're running it on that side. So what they try to avoid by zigzagging, you avoid cutting all a clear cut. Okay, but, uh, the beginning of Deja Road, all the way to our house, it, it, mainly all on one side. And right. And see, that was done at that time with mm -hmm. one property owner. Yeah. Right. It was all owned by one person, yeah. so there was no question about it at that mm -hmm. point in time. But after what the, the section that Carl Schick built, everything beyond that, well, maybe not everyone, but most of them start zigzagging, and that's to avoid having to, yeah. to clear cut. Well, we're okay with the zigzagging. It's just we like you to that, zig I understand. I, of, yeah, I understand that. And so, let, me, let me ask you, Keith, from, from the point of view of, of benefit to the road, if, we, if you did clear cut, if you didn't zigzag, if you did clear cut, are we improving the uh, condition on the road? The winter conditions say we... I the, snow or storm damage would keep right the one thing that road. would potentially be and as long as the property owner isn't objecting to you know the th there's property is be that would be the side that would be cut more um by my the way i understand it if you were to move the poles differently so that it's not on that on the sears on that corner by the sears you bump it onto the other side that's going to make the their property have a lot more cutting that would be on the south side and so well. right it'd be on the south side um the trees that are in there there it's a mixed it's a mixed a mixture of deciduous and you know um so that it, if any of the trees get cut out and they let a little more sunlight in yeah. um it won't hurt the road it'll help a little bit in the winter time but it's at the same point in time many cases i know people just don't like to see it clear cut and um i can't speak for verizon and eversource but i believe there's no option of going across the railroad tracks because of aerial tra uh, not aerial trespassing but it's it's almost virtually impossible to get a new crossing over a railroad okay okay, I so, uh, okay I, I, I two questions one question is you said uh, that there was going to be intelligence and communications and like the uh, you know, electric power on these when you say intelligence what do you mean Internet. Internet. Oh, yeah, internet. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Comcast. I'm thinking cameras. You know, Comcast. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on you people. You know? <laughs> Comcast. So that's going to be the because it's internet. They call it intelligence. That's correct. That's very interesting. Okay. We live in a world of euphemisms. Okay. The other question I have, if uh, and, and not necessarily related to this, if a, a, a customer has. Um, lines going to their house and over time those lines have started to sag and droop um, um who do they call to get th something started about getting that taken care of i think it's because poles change over time um you know, a pole across the street got shortened once when it fell down and so on where, where do people even start on it do you happen to know depends on the line if it's electric they call what if, it's got all, what if it's got phone and internet and electric power? It's got all three on it. They call phone. They call they call Verizon. Uh -huh. They call Verizon cable first. TV, and they call whoever the electric company is. Okay, so three separate entities. If it, felt, if it doesn't affect anybody's service, it could be six months before they come out and look at it. It could be a day, Nobody's it could be six months, it could okay. be two years. So the office. individual landowner has to be in touch with the individual yeah. That's companies. correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I would suggest that there be a motion to continue the public hearing to your next meeting, which is October 11th. I would make a, mo a motion with apologies to everyone who's here. Yes. That we have to bring you guys out again. Okay. At 6 o'clock. Okay, I second the motion. Well, one of you should probably make it. I did. Okay, okay. Mayor, great. I'll second the motion. Don't steal my one. <laughs> okay. I didn't hear you. Three. Uh, all in favor? Yeah. Okay. Aye. Right. Yes. <clears throat>
And you would like you would like updated Thank you. updated Thank maps you. at that point? Yes. But again, that yes, shows yes, if we can agree on a bottom it shows property owners on the map. It, yeah, well, property it owners. Should show where the existing poles existing are. Houses, as well. Existing houses, existing poles. Yeah. Existing, yeah, if existing houses are getting power, I'm gonna be able to see that because that would have settled this, right? They're showing the on the map they're in the if, I mean, I'm taking Tammy's word for it that the poll is in the vicinity that she showed on the map. And if that's so, the house number is what you're looking for. The house number would be good on the map as well, but we can look it up by parcel. But then you came and said, "Well, these parcel numbers are wrong." So, yeah. you know, well, well, the correct numbers. Yeah, on the I'm not. Uh, yeah. I, my apologies too, in that the, the drawing is inaccurate. So I apologize for that. Um, and I will get that corrected, believe me. So um, so I'm just trying, because I have to relay this information back to Verizon, I wanna make sure that they get this right the second time. So when they redraw this petition, again, I wanna make sure that the house number is on it. Anything else that you would like to yeah. see on it? I think the house numbers are on it. I want the but existing the correct, homes, right, the actual places right. where they are. But the correct house numbers where they actually are in regards to the property lines. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. those are actually already on. I think your poles are in the wrong place. Right. Okay. Your existing pole isn't in the right location. Okay. I don't have any problem with the labeling of the parcels because I can look on the assessor's map and match those to where the houses are. Okay. But, if you, but I think it might help them to draw it properly if they put the houses on there. You want the location See, of the house on there? Right? Can, that's parcel 27. Here's my question. <laughs> There's the house. Yeah, and, and, and how do they get electricity? It's driving me crazy. But, but hey, Joseph, my 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 curiosity is, and I and I and I wish the Sears hadn't left because they said that they, unless I misunderstood, they are at parcel 27. Yeah, right. But they say they, say they live here, which is closer to parcel 33. They're waiting on us. Would you add us? Would you still have a time? Yeah. I, 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 they haven't left. Yeah. Let's. And well, they're they, going to show no, the house on my map. They said here. this is where the pole is, and this is where the house is. But they would, I, I'm not sure they would agree with that. They are close no, to us. So they know. build more toward us. Well, that's they're on the other side. They want to show them the maps. I know what interesting pole that you're talking about. Okay, but here's my. I guess my question is, when when she showed me her picture, yeah, it looked like she was on a straightaway, not on a, a curve. It's a house, right? But but Joyce just drew a picture that. He's showing us where the, the existing pole is incorrect on his drawing. So before we, we yeah. argue about something that's not correct, we, we need to uh, have them resubmit the, uh, a yeah. correct drawing showing the existing and the proposed poles and the location of houses on that. And a, and a confirmation that the numbers are correct, because I'm, I'm still not convinced. Well, and I get what you're saying, Joyce, I really do. But okay. we've got the, the property owners here telling us that Mm. They live closer to 33 than no. on our map to 27. I don't know. No, they're good. Well, what what they, Tammy showed they, me is consistent on, the map, on this map, not that map. It's on the, the, they said that because if they're closer because they to wrote, the yeah, I know. over here. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. For okay. For clarity. Okay. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You good? We just we just want uh, as little impact as we can for all the abutters and not yeah. there just. Yeah. Cutting trees, heavy trees, as Keith uh, indicated, on the south side. Not that I object to it, but I'll be left with a, a bunch of stumps. And, and this other plan that they originally had was very uh, uh, limited as to the amount of cutting, or just trimming to get the wires underneath an existing tree and it wouldn't be anything to do with shade or any uh, uh, aesthetics for the house or anything. So well, let's see how that's it comes where out. I'm at. Like, it, they might not even need four yeah. poles. Yeah. They've actually got an existing pole out here. Well, so, yeah, we could so just work it, it out. It's, it maybe it's completely a different plan that you come back with. So okay, that is what's the ideal distance between poles? 150 feet. Is that code or is that just recommended standard guidelines? It could be more. It could be less. Uh, they like to go 170, 180 tops, and, and they, I'll be specific, Eversource would like to go Sorry, maximum 170, 180. That's it. Okay. So currently, the way that that petition reads, 
It's 150 feet right on the nose, every one of them. So the only change that will happen, and I can almost guarantee this, and again, I don't speak for them, but based on my experience, if you take the pole and you put it across the street, they'll want to go across the street with the other pole. And hopefully in the next meeting, when we re-adjourn, that nobody has any problems with the poles beyond that, meaning the other two. That's one thing we did not address tonight, but if they have problems with the other two, we're back at it in a month after that. So. Okay. I, I just asked Mr. Fair for these. You're, some of these lots being developed. Are you developing some of these that are vacant now? No, they're at, at the moment. They're open lots. They're what is what they're. Uh, uh, we still own them. On the south side are open, so there's no houses yeah. currently on the south. Uh, the side. only house that is near uh, Long Plain Road, it, the house is. Uh, they're in that house. It's been built. The, but that none of this affects that. Affects that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. 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 Hello. Hi. Uh, we here tonight is uh, Tim Down, um, head of our property management for HRA. Basically, um, I brought um, FY18 proposed budget and proposed budget for this year to date, and I believe you already have a copy of the um, proposed management agreement. They are, they had cuts. Okay. All right. The reason we're here today is to ask for the board um, approval of the proposed management agreement. Uh, currently, um, HRA and the town of Waitley have a lease agreement that was um, set out in uh, 1997 at the time of development of the uh, Smikes property. And we, um, um, we have um, consulted with our attorney. It, it really is, um, does not lay out really the role of, for HRA to manage the property and collect rents and disperse the rents for um, utilities or whatever other services we need um, or to pay our staff that go to the property uh, maintenance staff or to manage the uh, the tenants. So um, this is a, basically a standard industry uh, <coughs> lease uh, management agreement, and um, we have incorporated some of the uh, um, changes that the um, housing committee has proposed. Um, so what we're looking for tonight is the board's approval of the management agreement, so. The end of budget. Yeah. Could I, I, I guess my immediate question was, why was there such a dramatic drop in rental income? Was that because it was vacant for a little while? We didn't no, that is year to date. So oh, I'm sorry. I, our fiscal yeah. year hasn't okay. ended. I missed that, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe the extra copies? Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, I'm, yeah, there should have been five copies of I thought there was, sorry. There we go. Why the, I noticed for the fiscal 18, what falls off, why the costs increase so much? We always um, budget at the high, at what we would expect to be the higher end of expenses. Um, and anything that is unspent obviously would continue to go into the reserve account for SMIKES. Because I'm looking at administrative salaries, you're in 900,000, you're estimating 1,200? 
Could I speak to that for a moment, sir? I, I developed the 18 budget. The, the salaries that you see here incorporate benefits, whereas in the other year benefit, the other year budgets that you see, uh, fringe benefits were listed as the last GL on there, which okay. you don't see on the 2018 budget. That's why there's the increase in those salary costs. What percentage are you using for the fringe? Uh, I don't have that number it's, in front of me. Uh, based provide. on, um, it's uh, should point, be a standard number somewhere. It's 0. 0.45079 for the agency. 45 percent fringe. Yeah, when you look at our when you look at our pension costs and you look at our workers comp and you look at all the other that's what it comes out to. So is is there what a management fee is how much more? In eighteen you're the management fee we're increasing it to what is the standard for all of our properties at eight percent. Smikes was the only property that we were managing at five percent. Why? What, because your agreement only allowed us to manage it at 5% and all of our other agreements had been changed over the years to bring it up to 8%. This one had not, and I don't know why it hadn't been previously, but it's something we really need to change. The, just to go, the management agreement that, you, that you're talking about, was there a revision to it since the Housing Committee provided comments? Yeah. Because I'm not sure that I had seen that. Yeah, this is the one that I sent you recently. Mm, I don't, maybe, I, maybe I missed it, but I'm not sure that I, that I saw that. Can I take a peek at it? Sure. And I'm, and I'm not sure that the board has seen it. This is the one that I, I sent after... Um, uh, the, the, the housing committee had proposed certain changes, some of which are incorporated in there. Right. Uh, you know, Ninety-five percent of them, at any rate. Uh, I, I wasn't aware that you didn't have copies of that. And I'm not sure that has the housing committee seen. Not the response to what we submitted. The response to our comments, no. And unless you received them, Brian, we didn't. Uh, again, I'll, I'll check. I don't recall seeing it. And why? And again, unless I'm reading this incorrectly, and again, I don't mean to nickel and dime it, but you didn't have a legal expenses line item in the past, and now you've got 225. We, um, we are seeing, um, actually, if you look at the, um, we are seeing more and more um, situations where we're having to have legal counsel on um, a number of variety of issues, um, and it's prudent to put some funds down there uh, for legal expense as we do in every other property we manage budget. Um, we could have, you know, we could have a situation that we would prefer to have the ability to spend for legal fees if we have to uh, evict or we have to um, modify a lease or um, negotiate in, uh, with any number of different entities that provide subsidy to the, you know, if the tenant has uh, some form of subsidy. Okay, and if you don't, I'm going to use another line and then I'm going to lump them together. If you yeah, I mean, they would mean we would take it out of another, we would have to revise the budget to take it out of another oh, wait, wait, line. No, 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 you're getting ahead of me. The other one that jumped out at me was the advertising budget for $125. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that purpose, and you didn't have one before, so that purpose. Affirmative fair marketing plan for any affordable housing property, you have to advertise for groups that you wouldn't suspect would be in, but you need to let know that there are units available. This is just, this is, is looking ahead if we need to advertise. It doesn't necessarily mean $125. Right, right. I that was the case, but, but you didn't have to do that in the past years? Uh, I don't know, sir. I built this budget. I'm relatively new with the authority. Okay. I guess because we always compare post and sure, absolutely. I, I would encourage you to do so. I, I do it out of a, a, an immense cautionary mode to be sure that I have it should I need it. And, and I know that people in town that I have to review budgets with get frustrated with me, but I, I love seeing plan versus actual. And the new budget forecast is typically based upon the actual. Um, and so I, I guess 
I would look for the actual being the rationale for those new line items. And then my follow-up question would be why or if the forecasted need isn't realized, where does that money go? It would be, it would, any unspent funds go into the reserve account that is, you, that is held in case of an emergency cost that we need to So cover. it's a contingency, and what is in that right now? Um, it's, on this it's on this page where? The bottom line, I think, is in the bottom line, Sean. Uh, that doesn't show the, the, that doesn't show the, the, no. the, the aggregate. No. Um, I because the, 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 the operating, that, that's, a, that's a net gain. Suffice to say that anything that doesn't get spent adds to the 1821 net income on the bottom line, right. which would then be swept into the reserve account. So, right, so I guess my question would be, over the last three years, you've got a ballpark of just a little bit north of $11,000 yep. that you did not spend, that you budgeted for. That would tell me that that probably has been a consistent number somewhat for no, years. No, because um, when I do know there was a period of time, and I can't, no, it was before I started at the agency, so I know that there was a period of time when we had a lot of difficulty um, finding a tenant for a unit. So if a tenant uh, decides to move, um, to do the affirmative fear marketing and to put that tenant do the qualifications, get that tenant in there. If we don't have enough um, to lead time before the tenant moves, <coughs> then we have to cover, you know, then we lose, then we, that's lost income. So um, I know that there was a, an extensive number of months when, um, at one point, that the um, agency did not have a tenant. I also know that there were been, um, <coughs> Prior to my uh, coming to the agency, there was a lot. Uh, there was uh, some serious capital um, projects that reserves had to be used to cover those expenses, um, and we can pull what those capital. But I think that was in FY14 uh, or 15. And see what I guess I would argue, and then I'll, I'll shut up. But you you have at least. Again, eleven thousand dollars, north of eleven thousand yep. dollars in your in your contingency. Yep. And I and I know I'm not denying it, but because you don't know that you'll need legal, you don't know that you'll need advertising. It strikes me that that's where you would draw any necessary legal and advertising. And then the next year, if we find that, that money was actually spent, and you'd have the, the actual costs. Then you revisit those line items, but with that kind of net cash flow, I struggle with that a little bit. Well, it's just a pretty way to do a budget for a residential real estate that you prepare for, rather than having to go and take it out of reserves that you 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 have you plan on it. Yeah, but then just potentially just has your reserves continually increasing, potentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess that there's, when, there's, when the boiler goes, that's a good thing. I, I get that. I, I totally understand that. But that's why I'm wondering what that surplus dollar amount is right now. Because I just over the last three years, eleven thousand. Is it twenty? Is it twenty-five? Is it eleven? I, it may be. It may be eleven. There may not have been a surplus pre, prior to these three years. Mm -hmm. I doubt it, but probably. But but it's possible. So let having me, that number would be important. Yeah, let me just share something. What? happening maybe in prior years but first off let me ask is this money actually available for improvements at the smike's house is yep. it in the budget for the smike's house it's in it's, it's segregated for the smike's house yes yeah. all three years here at eleven thousand. okay uh because one one of our concerns i'll speak for the housing committee was was uh if there was enough money being generated to create a reserve for capital improvements that are needed because you you submitted a request for capital improvements a few years ago that the town did not approve and i don't know how many of them if any of them have, have been uh implemented and improvements it was probably before 15 maybe 14 there were some improvements proposed uh if they're still there 
that could very well eat up the eleven thousand dollars you have in the reserve today and so that's i guess the housing committee's concern is if their improvements come up uh, again or different improvements come up that are not covered by your routine maintenance agreements here where is the money going to come from to cover the, to pay for the improvements and one of our concerns was whether you if there isn't enough money to do that is to increase the the rental income and is the rental income appropriate for for this property and if it isn't uh, you know you maybe know. that should be increased so we do have more reserve for these improvements that have been postponed to my knowledge well, been postponed the, for two three years the agreement that we have is limits the income the uh, people that can live in the house based on the funds you use to build it to 80 percent of area median income and right. um so we we are limited in what we can charge for rent to people at 80 percent of area median income um and we are certainly not going you know we're we're certainly not going to you know change anything in our agreements with our current tenants um to to increase income and that assumes two 80 percent ami tenants with a fair housing waiting list if i get a 50 percent that rent's going to come down if i have to put them in if there's an occupancy i can't if an occupancy occurs and that's dealt with in the management agreement i can't merely go searching for a, a resident at 80 percent ami and thrust them into a unit before someone on the waiting list who, who may come up at 50 percent that's unfortunately part of the the, the the bargain you make with affordable housing is your wait list is going to produce your prospective pool of residents and then where their income level is will dictate what the rent that they're going to pay in that unit's going to be. Okay, but then how do you pick people off the waiting list? It's a time stamp application when it comes in. And that's done only when there's a, a, a vacancy at, at the, the building and we call the wait list once a year, meaning establish who's still interested and who's not. But is that wait list just for this house or is it for all of Franklin County? I have a wait list separate for each and every property that we deal with. So there's a wait list for the Smacks house right now? There is, unless it's closed. I have, I, I, we've had two, two years in there, I believe the wait list is closed presently. Yeah. So, so that would mean there is not a wait list. Means, it means that there's an existing wait list, but we're not accepting right. new people to come on. But there, but there is a, a wait list, whether it's closed or not. Yes. It's kind of developed. But you're right, there is a wait list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, but that begs the question why is there a need for an advertising budget then if there's a wait list? Because when you go through, the wait list can sit there for a number of years. Well, no, you said you, you, you we call, call it once a year. year. Mm -hmm. So if we have, if people, when we come, when we have this problem uh, frequently, um, we'll have wait lists that are extensive for some of our properties. And then when a vacancy comes up, when we go through the wait list, people have not notified us that they already have another unit, they've moved out of the area, whatever the reason is that they're no longer interested in that unit. So then we have to go out and add, when, sometimes have When to we open the wait list, we necessarily have to advertise it as well. We're regulated in doing so. Okay. Fred, who's gonna plow their yard when the town hall is done? We the town, the town I, I think we agreed to do it with the next uh, agreement that came up. Yeah. We signed it to do winter, winter and summer maintenance, I guess. Yeah. Uh, That's what we talked about the housing right, committee. Talking housing but committee. And it's something I'd like to see memorialized in any agreement that we sign. Is that, is that, that hasn't agreement? been put in here. But, yeah. Okay, Ryan, you were, were you going to say something about the rental income? Yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's the conversation that we just had in terms of, I just wanted to highlight the housing committee's concern about what we just talked about mm -hmm. in terms of, in terms of the, the Smike's house as, as much as possible, I guess that's, those, those are my words, um, being self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. uh, but it sounds to me like you have some limitations in, on how much mm -hmm. income you can generate. You can't set it to be self-sustaining, assuming that everybody is at the 80% of the average. Right or area median income it has to be self-sustaining maybe at a lower level if we hope to over time 
really have it be self-sustaining because sometimes we'll have people who are richer, I <laughs> know I'm using that higher word, income higher, uh, higher of the lower income and lower of the lower income exactly. mm -hmm. in there. So it, if we're looking at long-term sustainability, we can't assume. And I don't know if these numbers are based on current residents and they all happen to be closer to the 80% or if they're at a lower. And that's a question I cannot answer. That's right. And I, I guess that's why I wasn't going to ask. <laughs> uh, but I don't know who's even allowed to have that information and that that's property management i mean it's not something that we even share with we would even share with the town right so it's private you know it's, it's but if there's a if there's a way to i don't know disguise it over time so that we can understand that while well, having a surplus of say three to four thousand dollars is that because we had people on the I keep saying the higher end of that uh, income spectrum. The maximum allowed income. Right. Um, they, do we have people who are on the higher end of that? Is that why we have the surplus? Or is this something that we could expect to have in the future because we're actually you have a broad range of people so that maybe this is something we should think about is, oh, this is really a three to $4,000 a year uh, investment in the infrastructure that we should be putting aside. So you're saying you can't really tell us that information right now, but I it might can't. be something that you could we, we, we might pull together and have like these guys. Unfortunately, with affordable housing, most leases run a year at a time, and I have to budget according to what's left on the lease and an educated guess in terms of percentage of renewing that lease. Yeah. Um, it's the educated guess part that becomes a little bit nebulous oh, yeah. when you're budgeting into the future. Yeah. So do you have any plans to use the uh, the surplus here? Uh, Not right? currently, no. No. Yeah, I'd like to see. I'd like to know that. I mean, I guess a balance sheet would show that. What's what is on reserve for yep. this? Mm -hmm. That the, would be very. There, there will be a regulatory agreement attached to that reserve account that will spell out what it can be used for as well. Great. Okay. Great. Um, but again, it could be eleven. It could be sure. Could be five hundred thousand there. I don't it think I would beg on that Trust number. Me, I know about it. <laughs> so I think what's I, I try to bring a little levity. You know, I, I think what's driving this this these questions are 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 the town's desire to, to do a little bit better capital planning. Do you guys have any idea or capital plan, capital improvement plan for that house? Do you know how old the boiler is or the roof or the condition? And do you have projections to say? Well, in five years, we need to put a new roof on it. It's going to cost X. And we do a, a, a what you're talking about, a capital improvement plan, a CIP, yeah. um, every year projecting out five years for all of our public housing properties. Um, we have just completed that process. So now we would go in and, and start to look at our, our other properties yeah. that are not public housing. Non-public housing is called a capital needs assessment. Uh, I generally would come in, depending on your commitment to affordable housing, which I assume runs the long term, they generally are done on a 20-year basis. Yep. Uh, the cost for doing so for a two-unit building is going to run somewhere between two and $3,000 for a 20-year. Um, then you have to establish how you're going to pay for those capital needs. Uh, certainly, the reserve account is going to have some memorialization in terms of what you can do. You may not be able to use that for certain capital needs. If you wanted to establish a capital account, you would have to take it from your operating account as you move along, and given the numbers generated here, it strikes me that it would be a very long time before you could build a big enough trust to do much capital work. So you as the owners of the property are going to have to keep that in mind moving forward. The, the, the revenue generated from two units will not be sufficient for a terribly long time if you're starting from zero to build a capital account. Good. I'm just wondering, you know, I, I write a lot of budgets, and, and one of the, my favorite budget line items is 10% contingency. Mm -hmm. And it's... You don't do that in an operating budget. You would do that in a development budget. You would do that, you know, in, in, um, in any variety of development budget. You do I, not, you wouldn't do that in an operating... Uh, I do it in operating budgets all, all for the time. standard for the, for the standards that we work under, which are the state... Um, you know, DHCD um, budget processes. We we don't we don't. Okay. You don't see that because that would be a way to, to, to do it. And 
Just, okay. But it's still going to come down to the income here again, the rental income. Well, it, it could be done. I, again, the, the agreement probably says whatever's left over after operating gets swept into the reserve. I don't know if it's operating or capital. Let's, let's call it a reserve, just, just, an operating reserve just for the sake of argument, okay? You may have to amend that agreement to take a portion of that to begin a capital economy. You, you're, the town is the owner of the property, and as such, there are certain things you can and cannot do. I would imagine that would be something that you could do, uh, and you would have to direct us as agents to comport with whatever shape or form you come up with. But again, that would not be something that, that we as agents would come up with. That would be under your direction. To deal with the income issue, as long you know, this was built with CPA money, that puts the restrictions on the. What was it? That's what I. That no, was no, exactly. No, CPA didn't exist when this was. No, done. this was not built for you. CPA used for any improvements on that. I was given incorrect information then. To date, now there was a proposal to, to use some, but that thing that accepted. Uh, is if the town wanted to to put this operating. Uh, surplus in our own account can we do that every year for that I, I don't know that the regulatory agreement would allow you to do so i'd have to read it over in concert with you and figure that out but it's nice that it's earmarked for this just in case there's an issue because yeah. to brian's absolutely point, yeah to brian's point if, you know in addition to the to the total reserve account um, it would be good to know and i maybe we have it or maybe we should have it what how old is the roof how old is the boiler how old when was the last time the, the driveway was done i mean these are things that you can at some level forecast even in dope like yeah yeah mm -hmm. we, that's oh, what we did 20, 20 yeah. years 97 was the first time so 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 that i'm, I'm sorry i didn't know plumber can tell you when the water's going to go yeah. almost yeah. Like that. that that's been done or that's being done or? no it has not been done okay. it hasn't been done in the last year but it has been done on a regular basis for all of the hra properties that we manage I don't have it with me here tonight. So, the, so oh, I'm sorry. There is a capital a needs day. assessment for the Spikes on house. the Spikes house. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Great. Okay. So who, who decides to who would decide to spend the operating surplus here? Well, in in the in, <coughs> currently it's not addressed at all in your lease agreement. First so, twenty five hundred dollars south of twenty five. You guys decided north of twenty five. That's embodied in the new management. In agreement. the new right. management agreement, right. that is embodied. Yes. Current lease in the old lease agreement, it's not addressed at all. I'm betting though, if I was looking to even pull a couple of hundred bucks from the reserve, I'd have to come to come to you, the owners, for permission to do so. I, I, I'm guessing. So say we wanted to replace the boiler in there because. It's coming up on its expected mm -hmm. useful life, yeah. Okay, so we'd have to come to you to, to use this this money. Well, I, I think well, saying coming to me is the, is the wrong term. No, you would simply pick up the phone and say, Tim, we want to replace the boiler. Right. And I would say, I'll provide you three bids. You pick from the three and we go from there. Right, okay. Okay, and that's in the agreement of, you said 2500 is a dollar limit? That's correct. That's what we put in the agreement. Because that, that's a standard that we have in uh, all of our other properties. Can our housing trust money apply to this at all? Uh, yes. The, I don't believe you can commingle funds from another entity with the Smite House funds. The part that is not CPA in the housing trust can. We have to look into that. I think yeah, that's working. Because housing trust says they, will, they can accept any and all funding sources. With CPA, of course, being the the major one, one. Yeah. the major one, but. I think, I think bigger picture. Okay. We should get away from the current lease that we have. It doesn't spell out a lot of the roles and responsibilities of, at all. of the regional housing authority yeah. at all, vis-a-vis right. -vis the town. I think the management agreement is an improvement. Um, with that being said, I, I feel like the housing committee should probably s see it first before um, yeah. you guys vote on it. Okay. Um, and see the budgets as well. And I don't know, is there, I know Richard's out of the country. Yes. Um, um, the rest of us, I think, are going to meet on the, is it the 18th, I think. Yeah, we have something scheduled for the 18th, so. And we could approve it what, on that meeting after that. Is there an immediacy? I know the, the lease will roll over. Um, our, our, um, our fiscal year starts October 1. 
Because of federal, because you're talking well, about because, federal. Yeah, we, we have um, a very large federal. I, I, I like this. I mean, I just give it a somewhat cursory glance, and yeah. a lot of it's boilerplate, obviously. Um, but I, I like it. I I just noticed one thing that it's, it's much improved, I, and it's only because it's it's increasingly an issue that we should look at because we have been dealing with it in another area is the drug-free workplace. So Massachusetts law, you'll get slapped around pretty good if you deny an employee or a prospective employee work because they're on medical marijuana. And I understand that falls exactly, flies exactly in the face with federal laws. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is, is that there, that's a no-win scenario for the town of Whaley. I mean, it's absolutely a no-win scenario for the town of Whaley. And I, I get, I get, there has to be say something. But if 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 whoever the 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 the, the, the worker is, if they have a doctor's prescription, there's a case law in Massachusetts now. You can't get rid of them. And I worry. And I mean, it's almost a question. Who's going to pay closer attention, the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court or the federal government? I don't know, but it's something that having this in a document that we sign, I'm not a lawyer, you are, Brian, but it makes me nervous. Yeah, um, the case law or, or the the case that was, that was on point for this said that the employer couldn't, um, essentially couldn't let the employee go that they had hired the day before based upon the, the positive um, drug test the employee had a medical marijuana card. But the, um, what the court said was you can't let them go, but um, there may be situations where the employer is facing a hardship. If it was and that's, school, that's an affirmative yeah. defense. So if it's a school, if it's a US DOT, um, right. You know, CDLs, those types of things. And the other thing they did mention was the Federal Drug Free Workplace Act. If the employer can show that that creates a hardship for them, again, none of this has been flushed out at all. Right. Um, so that's what our then, attorney has said. It's then, just a cautionary tale that I don't want to get hauled into court on the state level because we. And it, it, it might be moved because the employees are essentially ours providing services as an agent to the town of Wayland. Yeah, but we signed the contract. I, my guess is if I, if I were the, 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 the person looking for damages, I'd add the town of Whaley. Let the chips fall where they may. I, I'm just, I'm exceptionally nervous about this when, 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 when case law is so it, nebulous, it, it, ambiguous. It, it's, a, it's a something that, that we struggle with as well, um, but we do receive substantial amounts of federal funds at our oh I get it I totally at our agency it. It, it's a big, very large part of our right. budget and we have to comply with the federal regulations um, but I will I think you know Brian you can check on your end and I'll check with our attorney whether or not we need to have this in here I'm just curious yeah I guess. Yeah. Okay, so what action, so, so you're looking for us to take some action on this today because it starts October 1. Just yeah, to, but if, it does, if we don't uh, do it today, it's not that big a deal. We can always, that's my understanding from, from what Brian uh, communicated was, was that if this doesn't happen, to, it's not so much that we need to do it right away. Because um, the lease will renew and then we can just agree to terminate the lease and then. What is the hardship? If, it, if this isn't signed by October 1st? There won't be any real hardship. We'll keep operating under the lease agreement and we will, um, you know, we'll move ahead with this budget as it's set out the way it is. And, um, and we'll just, uh, you know, wait to hear back from the housing committee. Um, there is a 3% difference in, in, in the management fee beginning that should begin October first. If we, we could memorialize or amend the old Oh so we should wait then as long as we can. <laughs> That's what well, you told me, right? I probably should have kept my mouth shut on that one. We could just keep the keep keep the the fee at the former 
And if we agree to this, we would just pay retroactively. Yes, that's right. That was where I go. That's where yeah. Yes. You stole my thunder this time. No. Sorry. <laughs> it's just a, a budget I am doing here. It's not actual. Why? But. Yeah, I think especially because the agreement, there are some differences, and I think it, we uh, we really rely on our committees to for their expertise. True. To uh, help us make good decisions. So, is has there been another agreement with the changes? Yeah, I'll check. I'll check my email to see. Maybe it's in there. I didn't get it. I didn't have the email. sent me the agreement marked up with all the changes the housing committee asked for. Right. Yeah. We put all the, we put those in, and then that's the agreement you see in front of you. Well, except that the one you just handed us is different from the one we got in advance of the meeting. So, that, so I didn't see the new one. Maybe it's in my email box, and I apologize. If well, the committee the housing committee um, hasn't seen your your latest one. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. This budget for fuel oil is anticipating, well, no, I don't know what it's anticipating. Is it anticipating a relatively flat, no, it's year to date, so we're almost done. So you're anticipating almost a 40% increase to fuel oil. But we haven't hit October, November, December of this year yet either. But this is for that's for all of last year. But 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 1504 was for all of the fiscal, and then fiscal 17 to date only has another month and a half in it. So you so those three months wouldn't be included. So this number isn't going to go that much higher. It might be a little bit north of fiscal 16, but not dramatically. Are you, are you on fuel oil? I'm on fuel oil. Well, the price is going to be more than it's not going to be comparable to 16. No, but what I'm saying is, yes, it is, because there's only another, this is through August, the, the year to date? Uh, this is, yeah. Through August? And not through, through August. August, no, up to August. So we, through July 31st. So through July 31st. So not a lot of fuel oil there. What would hope not? Well, hold in, on. In, 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 in August, and then relatively yeah. little in September. So the number really is going to be pretty consistent with fiscal 16. So you're anticipating a 40% bump well, in, in fuel oil up yeah. beyond what we even had for for uh, a budget in fiscal 15. And look what was the actual usage in FY15. It was I don't have that number. Yeah, you do. Well, it's on this. 2000. 2015 was is this actual 2020, yeah. 2022 right which is still a no I agree 20 percent increase we're we're trying to be the purpose of the budget is to be conservative in our estimates so that we don't end up being shocked ticker sticker shocked at the you know during the year and then have to keep going and taking money out of reserves I, 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 I get that yeah but Short of the recent spike because of hurricanes, there's no indication that fuel oil is going to spike by 40 percent this year to last year to this year, and 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 um, in fiscal 15, prices were relatively low as well, and and I and I'm just struggling with. I mean, I get. It. Again, I really do understand the need to, I'd rather, I don't like rosy, rosy scenarios either, so I appreciate that. But 40% over now, that's, that's a tough one. Yeah, I mean, we can certainly bring that down, but it's just we're trying to, you know, we're trying to be, bring this budget in line and consistent with the budgets we see for all of our other housing and try to just keep that, um, methodology consistent across all of our properties as opposed to yeah but you know that, make, that means a two unit a two unit building as to most of our other senior housing projects are 20. Uh, right oh I, I understand that yeah i don't know what the efficiency of, of, of this house is whether you know i i, I don't know the new blown in cellulose that we, you know we didn't know but i'm i'm comfortable with this town's ability for budget and administrative oversight. The consistency means that I, at some level, need to be comfortable with some other towns' budget and administrative oversight. And I'm not. I'm comfortable because I can see this. 
I trust our employees and I trust the boards and all that. And if I know if I went to any of the boards that that, that I report to and said, and we're gonna have a 40% hike in fuel oil, they'd say, based on what? And they, 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 it, it wouldn't, they'd say, based on what? And if I said, well, I want to be conservative. I said, okay, then you know, twenty percent, whatever. Go go back to fiscal fifteen. But that, that I, I would have a hard time defending that if, if I, you know. And I, I get what you're doing, but it just, geez. Oh, okay, take a take another look at that. Uh, let me ask: Is there ever been an energy or mass safe audit done for the Smike's house? Not that I know of, no. Oh, we should definitely have Who that. would initiate that? Would you would. do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should definitely have should that. You do that to see that would affect the you know, electricity, fuel, and whatever else. This is oil yeah. heat, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, do you participate in any programs that uh, uh, you know, offer renewables or to add at a discount? Because you know, there's, there's all kinds of... Prop, uh, I, I, I assume the uh, utilities are included in the rent. Is that right? Yeah. Um, but there's like all kinds of uh, programs out there where you can get, you know, 85% off or, or I'm sorry, not 85% uh, off, uh, you know, signing up through a, a various solar farms or input of the yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. called the metering, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, it's, it's and it doesn't have to be on site. It's, you can I, I'm very familiar that. with Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very familiar. So um, is, is there any, um, any? There's no. We, we will look in to see if there's possibilities for a Smike's house, but for most of our properties, other than public housing, where you're not... They usually look for economies of scale, you know, and unfortunately, too, it just doesn't produce. No, 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 I, I know of programs where individual renters can get 15% off their electric bill by signing up to take a share of a solar farm. And there's four of them being built in Western Mass right now, and I know there a couple of them have closed, but they've got a couple more that are in Wamiko territory that still have yeah. openings on them. We're, and we're going to participate for our other buildings, but they're only interested in in size. No, no, they'll be interested in in something this small. That would be actually fine with them. They, they're, 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 their job is collecting them up, and if I if you I can send you a link. Uh, it's through a local, Please do. a small local company. Work. And so, to, so how much does the Smite's house cost the taxpayers yearly now? Well, there's a surplus. We're not we're not paying any so additional self sufficient, other self -sufficient yeah. until a capital item comes up. We're the three three to four thousand dollars surplus right now for the last about well, three years. Plus eleven thousand reserve. Well, that, you know, that's, 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 we don't that's know. That's just the in these three years. In three years. We don't know beyond be prior to 2000 fiscal 15. No, but currently. No, 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 no. We don't know. We're just totally on the reserve question. surplus from the past three fiscal years. We don't know what the reserve surplus were, was for the previous fiscal year. So it could, it's certainly not south of 11, but it could be north of 11. Right, but it is 11. No, it could be north of 11. Could be, no, no, but it's not less than 11. No, it's, no, it's not less than 11. Right. right. Plus the three. The Fred just mentioned, or that to just no, that's no, it's inclusive. That's inclusive. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other nope. discussion? Yeah. Um, we can tell we do have a blue school from fire sale. <laughs> uh, just to inform you, the school and district has a blue and fire sale. I don't know if your agency has got anything formal or if it's coming yet, but we are going to start reconstruction of the town hall next to the building. Yeah. Brian gave me this, um, yeah. the the um, yeah, this, the plans and we will work with him and whoever is selected as a contractor yeah. because we have a you the owner have a legal requirement to give plenty of notice right. to the tenants right. and we'll make sure that we get that done yeah. we will and it's part of the contract to make sure they have access at all times to, to that property and the plan is to provide two parking spots for each tenant of the building, so four spots will be reserved okay. in the back just for the tenants. Yep. That meets our, our zoning requirements to have the four. I think there's there's three probably being used right now. Well, I could tell three vehicles are usually there, but so so we're not affecting them anyway. And, you know, we'll keep them informed of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sorry to be so granular here. 
I'd be surprised if you weren't. Thank you very kind for having Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on, old business, uh, town hall project. We talked about it a little bit, Ryan. <clears throat> um, we did do the, I did some of the reference checks and George Dole did some of the reference checks on Westfield construction and they were positive. Um, the, the summing it up, the feedback, they, they did good quality work. They worked through issues with, that, they, that come up in a typical construction project. They had some material issues with um, some of the projects and issues with subcontractors, which general contractors were paid to deal with. Um, but they, they completed the projects and the references that we checked would, would hire them again, which is important to me. Did you uh, did anyone ask whether they were a firm that came in at budget typically? Whether they, you know, as we know, we don't have a lot of. Yeah, that was kind of asked indirectly. Yeah, over um, for the most part, yes. Um, okay. Did, did they work through change? They tried to work through change orders. Um, did the best they could. Okay. okay. So what's the next step on that? Uh, I guess in terms of so. The next step, Mass Historic Commission agreement. This is the next agenda. We have this is for this is just for Fred. Um, this is the grant agreement for Mass Historic Commission, in accordance with the Mass Historic Commission grant requirements. Um, we can't enter into a co contract with the general contractor Westville Construction until we sign the Mass Historic Commission grant agreement, okay. which is happening as we speak. Okay, so, so in a few minutes. So in a few minutes, this will go back to MHC, Mass Historic Commission, and they need to sign it. So, and then we can uh, get Westfield under contract. Um, currently, Town Council is working on the agreement. And um, so we're hoping sometime within the next two weeks we'll, we'll have um, the contractor under contract. Then when will they start? Um, they could start any time after that. I haven't seen a project schedule yet. Um, could we see one by the next meeting? I hope so. Um, and one of the things I've been talking about is also doing the groundbreaking before the before the. Do we each get like a silver shovel? Yeah. Sure. Whatever color you want. I think that was cut from the um, budget, wasn't it? And that's that something that silver shovel budget was zero. Uh, yeah, you know, bring your own. Bring your own. Bring your own. It's, it's yeah. going to be. It's going to be BYOS for sure. With the project budget, budget we have, yeah. bring your own shovel. I got a couple. So we might need them. So that's where we are with that. Um, so hopefully that could be sometime in mid-October, but that's still to be determined. Okay. Um, okay. Complete streets. Complete streets. We signed the contract for the complete streets money with Mass DOT and I finally got it back with a notice to proceed. And so that that work is going to be done um, with FERCOG, one of the transportation planners is going to be doing. Um, again, it looks like that's just right. Um, the work to create that prioritization plan. And that's phase two of, of the Complete Streets program. Once we finish this, then we're eligible for phase three, which is construction money. So the reason this is taking so long is they ran out of money in FY17. So now they have money for FY18 put into the project. I'll move on to new business. Yes. Yeah. So, so administrative assistant hiring, we received 60 plus resumes um, for the position. It's pretty good. Top oh, one position. We narrowed it down to um, five folks and Mary Ellen set up interviews and one didn't show up. Oh, and that's a strike. Canceled. It's a strike. Yeah, so <laughs> we're, thinking, we're thinking that's probably not the person we want. Um, <laughs> So we interviewed three this morning, uh, this morning actually, and we think we have um, two good candidates for checking references. 
Um, so if you're all right with, with, with trusting us to hire whoever we think is the best candidate for the administrative assistant position, we won't have to wait till October 11th. So when, when would this be starting? When would they start? It would depend on, really on their schedule, but it could, they could start as... Next day, if you need. Really, as soon as, when say, uh, they could have to give notice and all that kind of stuff. Depending, yeah, depending on, on the situation. situation. Yeah. Can, can we get the, I trust you guys implicitly, but can we get the resumes of the two finals just so we sure. have those? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so do you need a motion? Uh, if you're comfortable with it. Well, didn't we say last time for you to I think last time we didn't say you go and, and hire them and report back to us. And I think that's really what he's asking now, is that we we're so far through the process. Let's, uh, I, if you're comfortable with putting that decision on their plate, uh, then they won't come back and ask us on October 11th, which candidate would we like to hire? They'll say, this is the one we thought to hire. We've hired them, here they are. Maybe they'll even be there to say hello, but but that's 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 the difference. Okay. Uh, and I think I'm comfortable with it, but I, I like John's idea of just getting an idea from the re of the resumes. Yes. I mean, if you've got more than one person that you think is qualified and would work, then that's really good. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, that's. Okay, so you're making a motion. Well, can I have a question? We're not negotiating the salaries or anything. The salary is a salary. Yeah. And then I guess my other question is, if we hired you in that process, I think people would say that it's not very transparent. That's my only question is the transparency of the hiring process for, for, for a, a, public, a public hire. Um, what, what, what are we doing for the highway department guy who's hiring there? Are we picking or is Keith? I mean, it's there's no different though. There's a, there's, a, there's a committee, but I, I can tell you I'm going to defer to Keith because he knows highway stuff and I don't. That's right. I mean, he yes. knows it better than any of us. So it, and that's sort of how I feel about this right. as well. Um, I think we've been very public about advertising the position. Is there anything along the way about advertising the position and having open? Take, having Open yeah, session. An open process for collecting those. And this There's position also reports to the town administrator, yeah. board, which that just kind of board reports to you guys. The right, parallel. right. So I guess I guess my only question is, does it? There's no need. I guess what I'm hearing from you guys is there's no need to. I assume the interviews were public. If people wanted to sit down, and they could have. Is that correct? I don't think they have to be public. Right. They were, the reason why the interviews for town administrator were public was because it was the whole select board select interviewing board. it. Yeah. We were, that has to be a public. Okay, interview. I'm just asking. I, you know. Yeah. But we didn't do that when we Mary Ellen got the newer position here. What two years ago? That wasn't a. We didn't interview in a public you and anybody else that okay. applied. Okay. Right. We uh, just selected. Or right. I'm just making sure that no one says selected. you guys did this under the cover of darkness. And yeah. Okay. So would you say you're going uh, to Yeah, motion? I'd like to make that motion to let our very capable town administrator in. Okay, all in favor, aye. Yeah. Okay, Brian. Okay, ADA Municipal Improvement Grant Application. That's what you sent us in the right, so this is, email here. Yeah. What we'll be looking at is really just the offer for I mean, we'll have a meeting before this before this is submitted, but um, this is the grant application that we were talking about in terms of additional yeah. funds for the town hall. Um, yeah. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of work to pull this together because we need an ADA self evaluation, oh. and um, our ADA transition plan is from a long time ago, 2000. Well, because a long time ago, 2004. 1998, it's, it's so almost 15 years old, um, 15 to 20. Um, so there's going to need to be a lot of legwork work um, to get those things updated. Um, I've asked the, the architect to go through, and the other concern I have is about the timing. The grant application is due in November, it's awarded in January. Um, one question I have to the architect is, 
is how far along the project are we going to be? We, we're going to be October, November, December, January. Let's say everything works perfectly. We're not going to get a signed contract from the state by February. So we're already five months in, four and a half, five months into the project. What's left that could that would be eligible? Um, and, and I think your email and the new piece of information was that if anything's already done, it can't qualify. Right. I, I have yet to but get a not done at the, at the time of right. putting the application in. It's like done at the time of award. Yes, typically the state, the standard state contract says any, any activities done prior to the effective date of this agreement is not an eligible, eligible expense. But that means work on that, act, that activity, though, not work on the project itself. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get clarification right. on. Yeah. Because are we, are we going to ask in the, if, when we sign the agreement with the contractor, his schedule of yep. work that's part of it? So in here, if he has doing some ADA stuff in October, we could suggest holding off and doing them until later on. We could. Uh, I mean, some of it will get done but anyways. Because yeah. right. what, I, what I was told from the architect is that, say for instance, the whole entire back rear addition, because it's for, because it's gonna house the lift, mm -hmm. is that it's, that it's an eligible right. expense, yeah. but we're gonna presumably pour the foundation. We're right. probably gonna have the envelope done Right. I think that's the plan before yeah. before so it gets really cold. Have to happen before other um, so how much are we? I'm looking to try to balance the administrative yeah. lift that needs to be done to update all these plans versus how competitive is this? You're gone. I I'm not familiar with this grant application, and and I would like. I mean, one of the things that will will tell us is how much money is actually available. Conway is well away, well along on this one. Yeah, but if. Getting back to the, the schedule, the project, so. the schedule of work, I mean, yeah, if they do the addition, I know a foundation and all that, there's still, they have to buy the equipment for the lift. Yep, the so, lift's 35000 Right, 30, so maybe is it worth our effort to apply for the 35000 if it comes to that? But then I mean, that 35000 could make the difference if there's a contingency. Right. right. I mean, just, yeah. I mean, it could make a difference if the front parking lot's done. Yeah. Right. So Brian's point would be, is that worth the, how much? Well, you know, man, we ought to have an up-to-date plan. We ought to have, yeah, yeah, the other side, we should have one of those anyway. Right. And how they, now, it, 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 the other things take priority. But um, if we had a more up-to-date plan on the shelf, this would, this would be no deep, no big deal so to apply for. They would be yeah. really So maybe this is a kick thing. in the pants to get it done. And yeah, this right. might be the kick in the pants. And, but, and we're going to have some really awesome new assistant. Yeah, would well, the assistant be able to that do that? Help or one one help of the questions I should have asked, have you ever done a self ADA self-evaluation yeah. and transition plan yeah. in a month and a half? At least there's one that's, that's there that you can work from. But I, you know, they, I, I understand it is it is a lot of work. But yeah. if it's potentially something in the area of thirty thousand dollars, it's worth it. Well, I, think yeah. I think it might be. And that that's how I proceeded so far. Yeah. I was I was kind of deep down into it today. Because yeah. you knew you know how cheap we are and that every scrap well, of money. Oh, I know how close we are with the budget. <laughs> well, you not only got the lift, but you got the ramp in the front of the building and the doors. I guess it could be waited until they. Well, in the in the restrooms too. Restrooms, yeah. Um, so I think there's. So. There's no guarantee we were, were awarded the grant. There's no guarantee we're awarded, but uh, we can try. We don't want to do something that would uh, really jeopardize. I guess so. Project happening on a good time scale. I guess we're all in agreement that yeah. you should go ahead and apply for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, moving on, uh, town administrator. Update. Town administrator updates. These are your favorite. Um, we, we, are, we also put out an ad for, to fill the highway department. Um, what used to be called the former position is called senior operator labor, same position, different title. We received 16 applications mm -hmm. for that, and I'll be reviewing those with, with Jonathan and Keith, and we'll set up some interviews and go from there. Um, this is kind of centered on the back burner. If you remember the Hampshire County Insurance Trust and yeah. uh, all the stuff that we did. Um, there's gonna be a, a, a town administrator meeting with Joe Shea from the Hampshire County Insurance Trust on October 18th to try to see where we are in the process. Get updates, because everything's been kind of silent since that initial yeah, push, yeah. and we haven't heard too much. So 
top, just realize that's still simmering out there. Um, I also sent you emails. There's an important meeting on October 24th yes. um, in relation to a bond proposal from Frontier Regional. And I have not had a chance to read the little update you sent today. I have not either. Um, I think it's going to be a little dense, so okay. I didn't have time to get into it. Um, the dump truck that originally didn't sell on Municipid has sold for $5,000. So that um, $5,000 that goes to the general fund. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Did we require them to take the dugouts at the same time? Oh, I forgot to put that in there. Yeah. It's getting picked up tomorrow, so we could go film it. Please back. put the dugouts in there. Yes. <laughs> Just put it in the there. chairs and everything else. I don't know how this got there, but. Get one free. I think there's three, right? <laughs> Four. All right. That get That's good. Free. That's good. Anyway, and finally, Fred and I had a meeting this week with uh, the Frontier Regional School Committee Subcommittee on the Blue School. Um, and at our last meeting, we had talked about working in partnership with, uh, with the school district to pre present the lot for sale along, um, simultaneously with, with the Blue School off piece. So, um, our, what we intend to do is, at our next meeting, I'll have the RFP for you to review, and hopefully we'll get that out in sometime in mid-October and see what's out there in terms of, in terms of interest in the, in the Blue School and whether someone's interested in the lot to the north of it to make that project more viable. <coughs> we, we, we may have to entertain, well, I guess I could just do a special permit, but you know, zoning changes for that, for that location, if it makes it more marketable. Yeah, that was yeah. in the proposal. It was? Yeah, the offering. To at least discuss. Do you at least discuss zoning changes here? Yeah, okay. And then the other, the other thing we need to keep in mind is that if this does go forward, um, and I guess we're looking at the, you probably want opinions of, of the rec commission in terms of ball field relocation. Well, yeah, and it's not like we have a lot of land at our disposal for that. Um, you know, there are a, a couple options. If you look at the square footage of that, where the footprint of, of the current softball field I'd be curious to see whether that square footage is similar to the to the footprint in the field between the highway garage and the fire department before the uh, the grassy knoll, because um, it may be similar, and, and maybe we would just do a complete makeover of that field and make it into a permanent softball field um, that could be used for for you know t-ball too, because they don't the skinned infield they don't care about. Um, the the other the other piece, and I've been hearing about it more and more, is um, to have conversations with other people about their interest in selling property um, that is that would be geographically friendly to Hurley. Um, but we do need to have that conversation because we can't we can't just we don't have that much. You know, Hurley is used a lot because of the big high school, on and on and on. And we, if we sell that property, we do not have a softball field. And we don't have, in, unless the, the space on Christian Lane is about the same area, we don't have anywhere that I can think of that would be an adequate softball field. And again, yeah. unless you, you know, the elementary school, the elementary school gets cool. so much use. That, that the wear and tear, because that's where the playground is, it, it, the, the, you'd, be, you'd be spending money on rehab on a regular basis. So there aren't that many options. Um, so we need to act fast on, on that. But it may be an opportunity to pursue other land so that you could think bigger than just one softball field. That would be my... Well, yeah, I've, I'm not an expert on ball fields or softball, but I've heard, you know, for the... If you look at the age of kids playing there, I mean, maybe you don't need a softball field that can accommodate high school playing, but for grade schools, you could have a smaller field. It, it doesn't, the, the one that we have currently I, I don't is for grade school kids. Okay, okay, I don't know, not, but I'm, I'm yeah. saying th there couldn't be a difference in the size of the field you need. Yeah, there's not, there's and, the area, the, the field that is the current blue school field is a very tight location, especially because not too far into the outfield are 
Uh, oh, I, I think it's well. I think there's a septic. Sept I don't know what is out there, but it's, it's you know. Yeah. Okay. It needs to be, we, we would need to figure out a, a substitute, and that's just in, in deference to the fact that we have a lot of families whose whose you know girls play softball in this town. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Brian? We've got some uh, some uh, letters here in the packet. Do we need to act on some of these? Uh, Sunderland, Sunderland uh, request to be in the what, parade. Yeah, I'm I'm interested in doing it. You just need one one indication from the town. You don't need individuals, do you? Right now. Yeah, it's just to the whether the town would like to participate. I think I would, I would say yes. Absolutely. I think for Jonathan and Tom Five Jones could ride on top of an ambulance too. Yeah. <laughs> half the ride would be have arm in arm, and half the ride it would be you know the other. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, so, so we would be responding on, on mm -hmm. at least. Thanks. One We're plus from the select board. Yeah. 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 I assume yes. the. Well, we'll make sure they reached out. I'm sure they've reached out to the fire department and the. Yeah, the folks, but we'll make sure. And, uh, okay, and what's the, the other one here for tree, Liberty Tree Project? Or is that just information or? No, this is. What's that? We talked about this. That's what did. Probably eight or nine months ago. Um, this organization is, this, this came through Stan Rosenberg's office. Um, uh, essentially, it's this organization that will fundraise, a veterans organization that will fundraise, and um, they'll plant what they call, um, what they call memorial trees. Essentially, they want to plant, if we want them to, they will plant trees of whatever type we choose and location we want as a living memorial to, um, to veterans. Mm. I, I think it's great. Yeah, uh, who would be a good person to figure out the information that they want, which is the number of trees and types and locations? Tree warden. Tree warden. Tree warden. Tree warden. Is that that's a, uh, an empty position? No. It's, no, it's not. He left. He, he was here. Was he? Okay. Yeah. Well, that is perfect tree warden. Project. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. You know, I don't know whether the maple trees on Chestnut Plain are permanently scarred or whether they'll bounce back. But um, if they're permanently scarred, a whole host of maple trees, the problem is those things grow at glacial speed. Right. But we've, we've lost a pretty scenic fall avenue, yeah. at least this year. Now, are, are they going to memorialize veterans by planting trees? Is there going to be a veteran name on each tree or something? Or? I, I don't know the answer to that. It maybe should involve the, the veterans, whatever. But tell them, that's at least, at least inform them that that's yeah. going to happen and whether they want to take an interest in it or not. Yeah. My guess is they're aware already, but it would be in the conversation to have. The BSW, yeah, the BSW. Yes. Okay. Is that it? Did we get any uh, state certifications? Um, big cash or new growth as yet? Uh, it's There's certainly no, trickle in there. Ray's though. working on submitting it. I think he's yeah. real close to having it done. What's the turnaround after? It depends on how, how, how many other people are. Because I've, I've heard them starting to trickle in yeah. in other places. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Just to have the CPR is. Okay. I'd like to thank Jonathan for putting up with a good argument at the stems. Wait, I'm sorry, Dan, what did you say? I said, I'd like to thank Jonathan. Dan, I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you handled it well. I'm, I'm in total agreement that it's time for it to step out of a, a buddy arrangement and turn into a professional agreement. And here's what happens when you start it, here's what happens when you end it, and here's how you, how you disperse it, and it's gotta be a, 
a legal and document, no doubt about it. Has no reflection on the quality Absolutely. Of, the, of the current case. I hope it goes for 100 years. Right. I, I totally agree. Is there problems with the way it is now? Or what's no, it's, it's just too loosey goosey. Nobody knows the answers. No one, if, 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 if the organization were, were to, if one of the towns were to pull out and it didn't exist anymore, where do the assets go? Because right now the town of Deerfield owns all the assets as the fiscal agent. That was, how do you dispose of the assets? Who votes on what? Because there are no details. Is there a surplus or, or, or surplus to be collected? Is that being addressed? Or, well, I think it would all be involved in this. Yeah. It would all be included in this. And, and it's not that big a surplus. I mean, the surplus is there to, to you know. No, he's it's, talking about the uncollected debt. Yeah, the uncollected debt. Oh, from ambulance rides? Yeah. Oh, that's a whole uh, other category. Yeah, they're, they're working on that. Yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a challenging. And actually came up in the... That's the pay the, pay the, uh, pay the patient, right? Pay the pay, right. That came up in the um, MMA's legislative breakfast in Northampton last week, where they were talking about legislation that's at the state house right now where insurers would pay the insured as opposed to the ambulance. So the towns or entity like scams would have to chase the, the former patient as opposed to, and I, I haven't heard a good argument for that yet, but so anyway, but, but thank you for those, those words, Dan. It's just to professionalize everything. And Brian, I will forward you a draft of what I've seen. Someone took a first step and that's what's important to take a first step. Um, but I would appreciate your thoughts on what else need, is needed, if anything. Yeah. Um, because I know that kind of Deerfield will ultimately send it to their council for for their thoughts. But I'm gonna send it to you either tonight or tomorrow if I depend on Well, with the new building going up, I will do a new uh, um, agreement. Something understanding memorandum of understanding. No, because it's the same footprint as the as where the current as where it currently is. Yeah, but we won't be paying Sunderland twelve thousand a year. Yeah, but that's, not, that's I don't think that's an MOA issue. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I can I'll check into that, but I don't think it's an MOA. That's just a, a, a budgetary. Okay. Um. So, but it's you know what? Every family has their. They need to work through issues sometimes. Yeah, and it's working for them. It's, it's working well, so. And by the way, I, I, I would actually like to put on the agenda at some point to have Zach come in and brief the board so that Waitley knows what a tremendous asset SCEMS is um, to the town and to our region. And I don't think that people fully understand the asset that SCEMS is. Um, so if we could get Zach in here in a meeting, in an upcoming meeting where we're not looking at the clock saying we had too much on the agenda, um, I think that would be great and he'd be happy to do that. Okay. 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 Motion adjourned? Yep. Yes, please. Okay. I think it's all right. It's so quiet.